I'm here with Rani Kamani Singh. Rani is a craft designer in which she makes tunics from organic cotton and she's here with us today. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Thank you very much. So tell us, what inspired you to design tunics and how long have you been doing that for? It's been almost more than 25 years. I've been working with women artisans in the villages where I come from, Sihara, which is in UP. And there's, uh, it's hot there, like in India, uh, nine months of the year. So cotton is a very essential fabric because it's airy, it's very comfortable. So I wanted to make it more like royal by bringing in a lot of gota work, hand embroidery, embroideries with that, and some kundan embroideries, all hand dyed, which are chemical free. So this has been the reason why I brought cotton in my country, I mean, which is very formal to wear. Yes, that's incredible. And how many women have you been able to help through the, the tunic craft? It's uh, different groups, more than 300 women. They work with us in an organization. And uh, we used to do a lot of crochet work and embroideries and then stitchings. So they've been trained for this. That's incredible. And how long have you been associated with Royal Fables? I've been from the beginning when the Royal Fables started, from day uh, Royal Fables started is like almost three years now, 2010 it started. So six years now, I've been there with them since then. That's awesome. And how has the growth been since you've been associated with um, an organization that's really pushing out craft? Uh, it's, it's been really, really a beautiful growth of Royal Fables and all of us because each one of us has been able to show our artisans the craftsmanship and whatever we present from our own estates, you know. So it's like a emporium, artists, like uh, jewelry, a lot of other stuff, you know, what we used to use and which is also given a twist in a modern way, you know. So it's, a, it's almost representing India in a different way. That's awesome. So how do you feel being here in the United States in Dallas, Texas, showcasing the tunics that come all the way from your, your homeland, <laughs> India? Actually, uh, we have a lot of expectations because uh, India has uh, become a very essential part of the world now. And everybody has been watching Bollywood so much and totally impressed by that, the dazzle and the glitterati and the glitter what we present from there. So we had expectation that a lot of uh, community f and foreigners from your country, I mean, the, your people are going to be coming and visiting us and seeing what we are bringing from India. That's awesome. And where do you get the inspiration for your tunics? I just had it in me, I think. <laughs> and uh, it's basically a private collection, which I used to make for myself only. Wow. And uh, then my daughter told me that I should be showing my designs outside too. And that's how we brought the private collection to the world. Well, that's incredible. Congratulations on all your success so far. And I'm sure that you guys will be able to see maybe one of their showcases in your city coming soon. We're here with Nandini Singh, who's showcasing her collection of paintings, as well as her men's collection, made all handcrafted by her local artisans in India. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good to be in Dallas. That's awesome. Is this your first time here? Yes, it is my first time in Dallas. How have you seen the support so far from the Indian culture here in Dallas? It's been incredible. I've, I have some uh, friends here as well. I'm with them. I'm staying with them and it's been really nice. That's awesome. Good to hear. So tell us a little bit about your collection. What kind of pieces do you have? Um, how many artisans do you have working for you? So I basically work, uh, my forte is uh, paintings. So I basically work with a lot of artists who, uh, you know, they're, they're basically from Central India. My collection is called the Vintage Pop Collection. So it has uh, Pichwais from Nadwara, like you know, and there is a beautiful wildlife art. I've also got a Christie's awarded artist called Mr. Jagu Prasad who is uh, very, very famous. So I've got a, a whole bunch of collection. I've got some Islamic art as well, which is of course in form of calligraphy. And uh, yeah, so that's my collection for uh, the trip here. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about your men's collection. Sure, I've also got a lot of these enamel buttons and cufflinks for men. I've got some beautiful hand woven half jackets for men because I think 
the men's segment kind of uh, uh, remains a bit neglected. <laughs> so I thought I'd work. Uh, so I've got some really good designers working for me now. So I've got like a brand called Northern Art where I try to promote designers and artisans from my uh, town, you know, which is uh, my place, which is in central India. So I work, also work with a lot of uh, Gond artists. Uh, they are basically these tribal artists. So I work with them also, and it's a pretty much depicting the folklore or the folk tale of uh, our country. Now I know India is a big melting pot. How has how have the different cultures in India affected the art that you see? Uh, it's. It really depends. What I basically uh, am, uh, mine is like a mixed collection. That's why I call it a vintage pop. So it has its, uh, it, it's sort of a melting pot collection, but it deals a lot with the flora and fauna of the country. So it's uh, maybe a Save the Tiger campaign. I would put up my wildlife paintings and charcoal as well as watercolors and uh, I have a lot of birds and a uh, lot of uh, everything to do with flora and fauna that our sort of country lives by, lives on. Yes, I and I see that you have such amazing works of art. Tell us what goes into making this? How much time, energy, effort does the artisan have to spend? Yeah, so typically this is a Pichwai from Nadwara. You know, Pichwais are basically, uh, the, this is a temple art and it's, it's uh, worked on cloth. And uh, the medium that's used here is vegetable colors. This, uh, this particular Pichwai is about a 40 year old Pichwai. So it's all blessed under the shine of uh, Lord Krishna. So that's why it's, uh, and this, this particular Pichwai is called the Chappan Bhog, which is where the food is being offered to, uh, to Lord Krishna. Is this the oldest piece you have in your collection? No, I have uh, two, three, so four of them, which is of course the Krishna forest right there. So I have that in my collection as well. Amazing work. So anything else you want to tell us about your future plans, what, where you see yourself going? Yes, I actually also am uh, tying up with the government of uh, Central India in Madhya Pradesh. And I'm trying to uh, get my artisans to do an incredible India, make in India, event for uh, the upcoming winter session. So I'm hoping it goes well. It's going to be a very big event, which I plan to do it in Delhi. That's very exciting. Thank Have you, you um, congratulations on all your work so far. I mean, Thank these are you. just amazing pieces so and these are all available for purchase today. Yes, absolutely. Right. Uh, you know, these are all for purchase and I've priced them very, I've priced them uh, not for myself, but more so for my local artists and I hope that they get some gain out of this trip. Awesome, and how many how many artists do you have actually doing the paintings and the art? It depends, typically I right now I have about five to seven artists that I'm curating. Congratulations. Hi, this is your host, Estella Treviso for American Bollywood TV. I'm here with Anshu Kaman. She is the founder of Royal Fables, which is an organization based out of India where Different designers make handmade crafts. She's taken a tour all over the world, made a stop here in Dallas, Texas, and we have her here today with us. How are you doing today? Good. Um, hello. It's wonderful to be here in your city. Awesome. So how have you found the support so far here in Dallas? I think people are really enjoying uh, what they're seeing because it's not what they'd get out of the market. It's really exquisite stuff, which is made in about 50 palaces across India. So it's all handcrafted, it's, uh, it's heritage, so people are loving it. That's incredible. I know you have some gorgeous pieces here. Give us some background on what made you start the organization. So, you know, all great stuff when it comes to handcraft were made in palaces uh, historically. And a lot of these young girls, like the women you'll meet today, have gone educated in similar backgrounds as all of you and what they've done is they've taken the heritage, moved it forward, modernized it so that it can be used in homes today. And I felt they were too shy to market themselves so we created this platform for them. That's very, very inspiring and I'm sure a lot of them feel more confident in what they're doing in their craft. That's true. That's amazing. Yeah. So how long um, have you had the organization and how have you seen the support from maybe the older traditional Indian community in the modern uh, acceptance of it? 
very good uh it's about five years old it's an exhibition based format but we are hoping to go online soon so that it's available to you in your home and we do these exhibitions in delhi bombay every year the whole uh, india waits for it but we've also been to morocco and bangkok and we just came in from vancouver where we were a sellout and that's quite encouraging because we were amongst designers designers and yet people found things really unique you know organic cotton made in a little fort in uttar pradesh you know by women who just sit and hand tuck themselves and yet it's something anybody would like to wear so the response response is good and even traditional uh, crafts people older people like it because it's a little bit of heritage right of course that's yeah. amazing so show us some of your best sellers what do people normally normally purchase is it the tunics the jewelry um the art to place on their walls art is a big hit or you know in india it's a big hit but i don't know uh we have some beautiful cushions which are made from ravi varma paintings then uh, nandini who's the who's actually traveled all the way here has you know revived a lot of uh, art from her region and i'm hoping that uh, people enjoy it and see it and acquire it awesome welcome back we're here with designer princess pushpita singh who is showcasing her beautiful jewelry um Pushpita, how long have you been designing and what's your inspiration behind these designs? Uh, I'm Pushpita Singh and I hail from this place called Kharwa, which is in Rajasthan. And uh, Rajasthan, you know, in Rajasthan, the capital, Jaipur, is the, is the jewelry capital of the world. So, you know, there are artisans from, you know, uh, you know, there were a lot of Rajput and Mughal influence in my jewelry. And I get it crafted, uh, you know, with designing it. And I work with uncut diamonds and, you know, inspiration because, you know, there's a legacy of all the royal families wearing, you know, very heavy jewelry. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my grandmothers and, you know, my mother and my aunts, I always seen them wearing beautiful jewelry. So I was always very inspired by them. And, you know, I wanted to put them to contemporary use. So, you know, f for the women of today, I designed for the women of today. That's incredible. And how have you seen the acceptance or support from the Indian community with your jewelry? Oh, my Indian community is very happy, you know, that I've brought this collection. And uh, thanks to Dallas, I, I love to be here. It's really nice. And Is that your first time here? No, I did a show last year. And I have an American client who invited me to do a trunk show. That's and, amazing. Yeah, and you know, I do. I deal in semi-precious jewelry also, which is, which is of great appeal to the corporate American women. So you know, I encompass a whole lot of uh, you, you know genres of uh, you know jewelry design. Uh, so you know, I can you know cater to all um, the expat community, the diplomatic community, as well as the Indian community. And what designs have you seen that are really taking off? from what you're designing? See, the traditional craft is very beautiful. So, you know, people like to wear the traditional uh, jewelry for weddings. Yeah. Yeah, weddings or occasions. But on a day-to-day -day wear, they like the contemporary style, my modern jewelry, which I do, and which I work with silver. So that's very interesting, which is, which is, which is very, it's a very global acceptance, you know. I have done shows in London and uh, in New York and Bangkok and Morocco. So, you know, it's, 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 but for, you know, with my gold jewelry, I've come for the first time to Dallas. Wow. Yeah. And I, I noticed that they have a very um, modern feel to them, yeah. even though Thank they're... Thank you so much. They're so I also have done some cufflinks for men. So, uh, because, you know, when women come to, sh to buy, they want to buy some things for their male companions or friends or, you know, sons or husbands. So it was a nice thing to venture into the male domain also. Awesome. And how long have you been doing the male section of it? Male, uh, male section I started about five years back. And there are some Sherwani buttons, which, you know, which we have a long, you know, achkan, long coat. So you wear, you know, all, all the princely families always had them in gold. So I have recreated them using, you know, people wear them now also. And how many artisans do you have working for you? I have a small workshop in a place called Bikaner. So I have about 20 people. Maybe five are women and 15 men. So congratulations on all your success and on being here. 
in Dallas, Texas, showcasing all your wonderful, beautiful work. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. You know, it's always nice to get into a, a different realm and explore, you know, whether people like it. You know, it's, it's wonderful to be accepted, not only in your country, in different various parts of the world. So that's a very nice. Well, thank you so much for your time. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm your host, Estella Treviso with American Bollywood TV. Thank you.